Okay then. So I'm just going to start with some warm colour over this side. Feels different. Just just doesn't feel like it's got the body of hair in the hake that um, a sable brush has got. Much thinner. Let's just take some of that wash, that colour out of it. Now the colour, the, the hillsides here are absolutely um, sort of brackeny, browny colour. So we're just going to have to go with a sweep of colour, but try not to let it run too much into the sky. So I'm going to have to try and control that as it goes up the page. And start just adding some of the, the clouds. Now it feels nice you're covering a lot of ground with the hake brush on the um, on the sky. It's quite controlled mm. using some of my bright areas now. That's okay. Just blend that in a bit. I'm automatically getting the greys, more some, some greys there now, because uh, so now I want to get in before that cloud dries, the sky dries. I want to get some darker clouds in. And I'm just going to use some winds of blue. Be careful here. because if, I hope you can see that I want it to run towards the top of the sky because it's all about sort of controlling the page a little bit and Just gradually at the top, just to give these a the slight glow at the top of the page. Now the heat brush is doing that quite nicely. Very nicely. And again there's another highlights there and just there is some in here as well so a bit more at the top here You can see what's going to happen here if I'm not careful. It's going to be some dreadful lines. So now I've got to get the some texture into the sky a little bit. There's a nice little lake here, this kind of purple in colour. Then it 
goes to a much darker redder but we'll come back to that and put some So now I'm just trying to pick out the trees and let them do their thing in the water. Naturally. Now, I think I want to move to a much Which I'm not which unfortunately the paper's got a bit too too dry but we just have to go with it now and it's just literally a little impression of a tree it's nothing much but it should give the actual painting scale Now I'm just dropping in some brighter yellows because some of these trees are being hit by the sun. And there's a nice one here actually. It's being hit by... Clean the brush out for this one. Because there's a nice little patch that I've left for it. Can't seem to get the bright colour that I want. Orangey red. I'll try that. That's not thick enough. And if I don't put it thick enough in there, it's just going to go horrible. Perhaps I'll use some Windsor yellow. See what that's like. That's quite thick. Just try and put that. No, it's not really done what I wanted it to do. I've put too much water in there. But as it dries, it will probably come good. Now just there's some other autumny like trees within the other trees. They're not all uh, I think what we'll do, even though I can't see it in the picture, I'm gonna run the reflections, pick these bright colours up in the water. And it might just add some interest. take that and just get some of it and then it's just quite dark over the far side there out some patches of colour here. And again I'm just using a dry brush, just the edge to lift out where there's uh, 
you can see the bank. It would be easy to leave those details out, but I think they're quite important. And it will enable us to put some little trunks in. And just those little bits of detail will just be quite interesting for the viewer. That's uh, the bit on the outside of the page. Probably might regret putting it in. But we'll just include it now. Leave it there for a minute. I want to put the tops of the trees in. Hopefully that will, uh, there's some quite deep shadow in that woods. That sort of picks out interesting trees. leave it like that for a minute in here because there is some grasses coming up and just as that's drying it's quite a good time to put them in Now, hopefully admit we're going to get some real impact to the painting when we start putting the, the dark mountains in the back here, the shadow down this side, and some nice long shadows on these trees here, and a little bit of shadow that's coming over that way. So I'm just adding a little bit of detail down the front here now, where this shadow is. I'm just going to scratch. A bit too wet, yeah. Come back to that. And the shadow under the tree is quite cool. make a big thing about it. Just it's a few places with some shadow. Actually there's quite nice shadows. Just got to uh, make sure I let's put these bits because these little bits of detail now because they're just very small bits they're very important little tree trunks I'm just dabbing the trunks in but watch you don't start doing it so they're evenly spaced like I was then. I also then want to get our scraper and there's some nice light trunks in there. Hopefully stop the board sliding back. We can just pull out some of the uh, up here 
that we just want to put in very simply. It's just casting a nice little shadow in places. And it just disappears off. They've got a bit of warmth in them. There's obviously the bracken shining through underneath. So I'm going to just place some red in there. Just come back to those in a bit. Not very happy with those at the moment. Now I think what we'll do is just put this mountain in at the back. And for that we're just going to put it's quite dark. Try and get the right sort of shape. Some purple in there as well. That'd be nice. And then as it comes round here, it switches to a bit of green in it. So we just need to take the opportunity to get the different colours. And it goes... And it kind of goes up. There. Then it goes... It finishes all up. Which I can't see. Because the mountain's quite pale in the background there. And we'll just soften some of the edges. You know, as we said before, uh, watercolour painting's all about hard and soft edges. If you have all hard edges, your paint is not going to look right. And I'm just doing the same here, just softening some of the edges on the mountain. Not too many, because then you end up with a painting that looks too soft. Now we're going to concentrate just down this area, because there's some shadow running down here, and then we need to soften that into what's around the mountain. And it kind of goes around the tree. So it makes the tree stand out a bit more. So we'll try and do that. But it's quite red still, so we'll try and get some more red into that. dried a bit and just soften those edges and there's another nice soft edge up here it's so important to have some of those hard and soft edges yeah. I'm on the top of the mountain Again, I'm using the same combination of colours. There's some, this kind of helps to describe the rocks that are up there.
because obviously it leaves all the the white areas. And then just up here, there's another little mountain just behind that one. And we're just going to get some warm colour and just run it across this colour here just to make sure we get the edge of it as we want. I just want to go back to the hillside while well, that one's still. I do apologise if you can hear the washing machine in the background. It seems to be such the loudest machine I've ever experienced. Right, so. This is just putting in the uh, approximate shadows on this hill where the different bits are and I'm just going to leave it like that and we've got the same on this hill just put the uh, just soften those edges a bit other sides on the trees. Helps give them a bit more shape. Some of these down here. Some in, there's some in front here. They need to go a lot darker actually. I think that's a very very important thing to remember when you're watercolour painting. To make sure you get things dark enough. But when you do go for your darks you don't want to be ending up going for sort of just like black holes. You want to make sure your darks have got colours. Um, or else you're just going to be not creating anything too exciting. It's just going to be some darks down here. There. I think, even though I can't see these in the picture, I think the painter would benefit from some reflections. These trees, just simple reflections in the water. There we go. Right. I'm quite pleased with the light we've got coming through here. If I was doing this again, I'd, I'd make that a lot clearer. Um, it just needs to dry now because I've got to add a couple more darks and that should just punch out the lights a little bit more. But overall, it's quite a nice dramatic scene. I'm just using some really thick watercolour paint now just to uh, put in a few highlights. They will do, they will, uh, as the paint dries, they'll dull down a bit so they won't be quite as. Um, stand out as they do now but uh, that should be okay final darks into where the rocks are but I'm not being a slave to it I'm just uh, like I always say, a camera would do that, record that much better than I ever would or would ever choose to. So I just want to get the impression of the scene and I come away feeling 
Oh, I've really enjoyed painting that. Not, oh my God, thank God that's over. Because it was uh, hard work. You know. That's my... Um, Well, I look at it. So we're just picking out the remaining rocks just to highlight where the shadows are. There's many more that I'm actually painting. I'm just doing a few because and then I'll go back and just soften some of the the edges so they don't look so hard. Okay then, so we're just about finished now. I've just added a little bit more um, darker colour to this area just to suggest a hillside coming through there. But apart from that, it's finished really. Um, what I wanted to achieve was get the two dark areas top and bottom and then the strip of light going through the middle we're kind of halfway there but it's not bad um, I'm glad, I hope you got something out of this and uh, might have helped you with a few techniques um, it was also interesting too using the, the uh, Ron Ranson hate brush um, I still need more practice with that but it was useful at the beginning and I'll definitely be using it again in more videos um, if you enjoyed this one don't forget to check out my uh, Facebook page which is um, below the link below the video sorry and also my website where you can sign up to the members course which is completely free um, you get access to the videos that you don't find on YouTube tuitional videos and you also get access to the forum um, so you know if you decide you want to do that please uh, sign up and it'd be good to see you there anyway thanks ever so much for watching and uh, another video is going to follow very soon so bye for now